The Gospel of Luke, Chapter 7. I want to invite you to take a journey with me today through one of the most powerful chapters in the Gospel of Luke. Now, whether you've read the Bible for years or this is all new to you, the message we're about to explore is timeless. The Gospel of Luke, Chapter 7, speaks to some of the most profound human experiences. Faith, compassion, and forgiveness. Now, these stories are not just ancient accounts of Jesus' ministry. They are blueprints for how we can live our lives with deeper purpose and understanding. If you've ever faced uncertainty, felt alone in your struggles, or carried the weight of guilt, today's message is for you. Now, we'll be looking at four key moments. The faith of a Roman centurion the compassion Jesus showed a grieving widow, the assurance he gave to John the Baptist in his doubt, and the extraordinary forgiveness extended to a woman with a troubled past. Let's dive in, and I hope you'll leave today inspired to apply these lessons in your own life. The Faith of the Centurion Now, the first story is about a centurion. A Roman officer, not someone you'd expect to be seeking out Jesus. This man had power, wealth, and authority. Yet he faced a situation he couldn't control. His beloved servant was gravely ill, and despite all the centurion's resources, he couldn't fix the problem. So what did he do? He turned to Jesus. But here's the twist. Instead of demanding Jesus come to his house, the centurion sent Jewish elders to ask on his behalf. And even more surprising, when Jesus was on his way to heal the servant, the centurion sent word saying, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. He continued by saying, Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Now, think about that for a second. This man believed that Jesus' power was so great and so beyond physical limitations that a word from him could cross any distance and heal any sickness. And Jesus was astonished by this faith. He turned to the crowd following him and said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. The servant was instantly healed, without Jesus even setting foot in the centurion's house. The lesson for us? Real faith doesn't demand evidence or grand gestures. It's not about proximity or being in the right place. It's about trusting in God's power and authority, no matter the situation. Like the centurion, we may feel unworthy, but it's not about our worthiness. It's about God's grace. All we need is to ask in faith and believe that God can act, even in ways that we can't understand or see. Jesus Raises a Widow's Son The next scene takes place in the town of Nain, where Jesus encounters a heart-wrenching moment. A widow, walking in a funeral procession, carrying the body of her only son. In those days, widows were some of the most vulnerable members of society. Without a husband or son, this woman would be left destitute, without support, and facing a future in isolation. Now, the Bible tells us that when Jesus saw her, his heart went out to her. It's important to understand that this wasn't just a display of power. It was an act of deep compassion. Jesus wasn't detached from human suffering. He was moved by it. He walks up to the coffin, touches it, and says to the dead man, Young son, I say to you, get up. Immediately the boy sat up and began to talk. The crowd was filled with awe, and they praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and God has come to help his people. This miracle isn't just about bringing a young man back to life. It's about the compassion of a God who sees our pain, feels it deeply, and acts. 
For us today, this story is a reminder that no matter how dire our circumstances, no matter how broken or lost we feel, Jesus sees us. He understands our grief, our loneliness, and our desperation. His compassion is not distant or theoretical. It is personal, and it has the power to bring life to even the darkest moments of our lives. John the Baptist and Jesus' Assurance Now, let's talk about John the Baptist. Here's a man who had spent his life proclaiming the coming of the Messiah. He had baptized Jesus himself and had witnessed the heavens open, with God's voice declaring, This is my beloved Son. Yet in the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, we see John in prison, facing uncertainty and doubt. John sends two of his disciples to Jesus with a question that seems shocking. Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Now, even this great prophet was unsure at this moment, and isn't that relatable? Even in the, mo- the most faithful among us have moments when we question, when we doubt, or when life's hardships make us wonder if we've gotten it all wrong. But how did Jesus respond? Not with a harsh rebuke or, or in any way that was negative. It was with love and understanding. He tells John's disciples to go back and report what they've seen and heard. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. In essence, Jesus says, Look at the evidence of what's happening around you. My actions speak louder than words. And he adds, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Now, the message here is profound. Doubt is not the enemy of faith. Doubt can be a stepping stone to deeper trust in God. And when we face moments of uncertainty, instead of withdrawing, we should look around at what God has done and is doing in our lives. The evidence of his work is often all around us, even when we can't see the full picture. The Forgiveness of a Sinful Woman Finally, we come to a story that beautifully illustrates the power of forgiveness. Jesus is dining at the house of a Pharisee named Simon, and during the meal, a woman enters, someone known in the town for her sinful past. We don't know the exact details of her life, but we do know this. She came to Jesus with a heart full of repentance. She began to weep, washing his feet with her tears, drying them with her hair, and anointing them with expensive perfume. Simon the Pharisee was shocked. He could not believe Jesus would allow such a person to touch him. Didn't he know who she was? But Jesus, knowing Simon's thoughts, tells him a parable about two people who owed money, one who owed a small amount and one who owed much more. When both debts were canceled, Jesus asked, Who will love the moneylender more? Simon answered, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. Ah, Jesus then turns to the woman and says, Her many sins have been forgiven, and her great love has shown that she deserved this forgiveness. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. He then tells the woman, Your sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now, this story teaches us that no matter how far we think think we've fallen or how deep our guilt runs, God's forgiveness is greater. His love is not limited by our past, and when we come to him with humility, recognizing our need for forgiveness, he doesn't turn us away. Instead, he restores us, giving us peace. And once we have experienced this forgiveness, we're called to extend it to others to live lives marked by grace and gratitude. So, what do we take today from the Gospel of Luke chapter 7? Faith, compassion, and forgiveness 
are not abstract ideas. They are transformative forces that can shape our lives. The centurion teaches us to trust in God's power, even when we feel unworthy. The widow's story shows us that Jesus' heart is moved by our pain, and he is with us in our suffering. John the Baptist's doubt reminds us that it's okay to question, as long as we seek the evidence of God's work in our lives. And the sinful woman shows us that no matter our past, God's forgiveness can set us free. So, as you go about your week, ask yourself these questions. Where can I practice greater faith? Who needs my compassion? How can I extend forgiveness to myself or others? You know, let's leave here not just inspired, but transformed and ready to live out these truths in our everyday lives. Thank you for being with me today. May the lessons from the Gospel of Luke chapter 7 stay with you, guiding you, and drawing you closer to the God who loves you, heals us, and forgives us. I hope you have a beautiful day, friends. I'll be back tomorrow with the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8. Take care.